taking off from airfields and massive vehicle focused maps are just a couple of the Battlefield franchise staples making their return here in Battlefield 5. Just a few days ago, DICE released the second of their Battlefield 5 dev talks. This is where they're going into a deep dive on direct player feedback and community feedback and how they're making changes based on this feedback before the launch of Battlefield 5. There's a lot to be excited about here, but I'm going to focus on the vehicle changes starting out here with the aircraft because those are the two areas of the Battlefield franchise where I spend most of my time. As you guys can tell from the title of the video, the feature that I am most excited about returning is the return of those airfields. Even back in the Battlefield 4 days, we saw a pretty severe lack of maps that actually had the aircraft taking off from the airfields, and more and more often they would just spawn in while in the air. This seemed to be a design choice that DICE would continue into their Battlefront Star Wars series, and then of course in Battlefield 1, all of the planes would spawn already in the air. On the one hand, this does make sense from a map design perspective, because these maps aren't big enough that you would actually have two opposing airfields in the same region that you'd be taking off from, but at the end of the day, it is a battlefield game, and the ability to attack enemy airfields was a huge part of previous battlefield titles. Before we get too carried away though, I don't think we should expect a Battlefield 3 level of playing airfields where uh, both sides always have an airfield available. It sounds like only some of the maps are going to have these airfields, and occasionally it's just going to be a single airfield that one side can capture back and forth, and I assume that the other team's planes would at that point then just spawn in the air. It's a bit of a half measure, but I'll accept it again from the realism perspective where you probably wouldn't have multiple airfields on the same map, I'm just happy to have any of them back in the game. And of course we've also seen in the open beta that some maps that have planes will still just have no airfields at all and both sides will spawn in the air. That is still going to happen some of the time. I had noticed in earlier builds of Battlefield 5 that the aircraft's wheel wells actually functioned and I wondered if that was a sign that we might see some kind of airfield action in the final game and it looks like that hunch was correct. I just really hope that as the game continues through its live service, we see more and more of these maps that heavily feature this airfield mechanic like the classic Battlefield games did. Given how hyped people have gotten just from this one part of the dev talk, just the reveal of the airfields, I would say that I am not alone in feeling this way. DICE also talked about some much needed post-beta aircraft balancing. Myself and many, many other people pointed out the aircraft balance in the Battlefield 5 open beta was atrocious. The German's BF-109 appeared to have a ton of improvements on how it handled and how it was able to both spot targets and take them out with a heavier hitting primary weapon, but the British planes on the other hand, especially the Spitfire, appeared to be reconfigured as a flying brick. Despite the Spitfire's real-life qualities of being the more nimble of the two fighters, it could never win a dogfight against an equally matched pilot in the Battlefield 5 open beta. DICE has stated that they want to keep some of the asymmetrical balance of the aircraft in Battlefield 5, while still bringing them slightly closer together as far as features and capabilities go, where they're not just copy and pasted versions of each other like they were in Battlefield 1, but they acknowledge that there was a significant balance issue in the open beta. Their goal is going to be to make the Spitfire and the other similar classed fighters feel more like the BF-109 as it appeared in the open beta, and to additionally improve on the handling from that point. As you guys can see in this background clip, the 109 is not able to easily outturn the Spitfire, and it appears that the Spitfire is actually getting a slight turn advantage the longer this spinning cycle goes on. That's a huge change from the open beta, and it definitely looks like while the planes don't handle the same, there will at least be more of an even balance between them. I think this asymmetrical plane balance is definitely more interesting than the uh, cloned aircraft that we saw in Battlefield 1, but it's also definitely more difficult to balance. What we had in the open beta was just frankly not fun for anybody. Occasional airfields combined with the resupply mechanics, which I still enjoy for the aircraft, and making those icons a lot less obnoxious than the original Battlefield 5 Alphas, means that I think we're on the right path here for the aircraft, 
One of the other common pilot complaints from the Battlefield 5 open beta was that playing combat often felt disconnected from the fight on the ground. DICE is working to correct this by improving the spotting abilities of planes, especially given that spotting and 3D spotting as a whole has been uh, decreased as a feature in Battlefield 5 compared to previous Frostbite titles, but they still want pilots to be able to engage ground targets effectively when they're not engaged in air-to-air -air combat. A pilot's ability to engage ground targets will be improved by the plane's upgrade trees, which a lot of players didn't really have time to delve into during the time period of the open beta, but DICE is working to increase just those base capabilities of the planes, so players aren't dependent on having to grind those upgrade trees just to be effective against certain types of targets. To counter the plane's increased ability to engage ground targets, DICE also revealed that we are getting some mobile anti-aircraft. This applies to both of the factions, of course, although the different vehicles have slightly different styles. The Germans are going to have a massive quad-barrel AA gun, while the British are going to use a slightly slower firing but heavier hitting mobile AA vehicle. This will help with the issue of pilots being able to memorize the location of the static AA sites. I just hope that DICE does get some of those beta wonky issues ironed out for the AA where frequently you would get hit by flak in the open beta if you were in a plane and you had no idea where it was coming from or even if it was hitting you until you notice your health bar rapidly decreasing. The flak needs to be heavy hitting of course, but a limited bubble of range and the ability for planes to react to incoming fire without being completely obliterated is going to be key while still allowing a nice solid ambush by one of these mobile AAs to get a quick kill on a pilot that's been harassing his forces for a while. As always, there's gotta be a middle ground that you've gotta hit as far as balance goes. I think Battlefield 5 has the potential to have some of the most in-depth aircraft combat that we've seen in quite a few Frostbite Battlefield titles. The changes talked about here are a good sign, and I think DICE is listening even if the plane's capabilities and performance in the open beta were disappointing. If DICE can correct the issues with handling and balance the aircraft against each other, combining that with the heavier cannon and bomb damage that we did see in the open beta should feel really good for pilots and help the aircraft actually add to the game. Now I know I've been talking primarily just about aircraft, but I want to mention the tanks just in passing before I end the video because I also do a good bit of tanking in the Battlefield franchise, and as the devs mentioned here in this second dev video, the franchise first feature of actual turret rotation is going to remain for the final launch of the game. And from what I've seen, almost everyone is enjoying this feature. It's adding more depth to the overall tank combat, while allowing them to make the vehicles more scary, like they haven't been in a while in the Battlefield series. If the slower turret rotation was your own personal kryptonite in the open beta, don't worry because there's an entire class of tanks that we didn't see in that beta. What most people thought were the light tanks in the beta were actually the medium class of tanks, and we still haven't gotten our hands on those light tanks just yet. As you might expect, the light tanks that we're going to see at launch are going to have the fastest turret rotation speed of any of the classes of tanks, while armed with the lightest weapons. And from what we can see in these couple of clips that we were shown in the dev video, they are also going to be quite fast. And for those of you that were quite disappointed about the civilian vehicle destruction there on the Rotterdam map, they also confirmed that you will be able to destroy a lot more targets like those parked cars as you can the trolleys that were destructible during the open beta. DICE is also adding more depth to the localized damage system here on the tanks. In the beta we saw a limited form of track damage, but it was really more of your track got damaged and you had no good way to repair it, and then your tank was essentially immobile. In the final launch version of the game, that's going to be a little less punishing for tank drivers. A thrown track or damaged track won't completely make you immobile, but it will slow you down significantly, and there will also be additional parts damage including turret rotation and engine damage. The addition of these damage changes along with that turret rotation is to not only add more depth for the tank drivers themselves, but for the infantry and other tanks that are fighting them. Like they keep saying, they want the tanks in Battlefield 5 to be the dragons of the battlefield and actually to instill fear as they are rumbling around in the fight. The localized damage will allow a single soldier the possibility of getting a nice significant chunk of damage in and possibly a partial vehicle disable, perhaps slowing down that turret and giving his squad a chance to get away, without making the tank drivers feel like they get hit by a couple of rockets and then are instantly useless in the fight. 
Now, of course, guys, as far as post-launch info goes for Battlefield 5, there's a ton more uh, details in this dev video. You should go check it out for yourself. I don't want to cover all of it here. I just wanted to focus in on those vehicle changes because, again, that's an area of Battlefield that I am quite passionate about. But if you want a recap of some of those changes, I would suggest that you guys go check out Flackfire's channel where he covers some more of those changes announced in the dev video in more depth and also talks in more depth about some of the vehicles that we did see uh, here in the dev video. Hope you guys found that informative. Again, I'm excited about the changes that DICE is making, and I think Battlefield 5 has a ton of potential, and it looks like they are making good use of the game's delay as we head towards that November launch.